Hello, today this presentation will go over how race and racism coincides with the medical and scientific fields. Western science is believed to be objective. In the United States, Western science is taken for granted to be unbiased, objective, and the absolute truth. However, Fields like medicine, genetics, and anthropology have been founded on racist ideas. These sciences were developed by people who are subject to the cultural biases and individual prejudices just as much as anyone else. And unexamined racial assumptions can still impact the way scientific research is designed and carried out. This can influence the outcomes of research and interpretation of that data, skewing it so it supports these same racial assumptions, even though it feels objective. Many research studies also lack sufficient diversity of research subjects across race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, instead relying on white bodies to act as a racial default. Furthermore, medical diagnosis determined by a patient's race can lead to unfair, inaccurate, or even delay or refuse medical treatment. Precision medicine is a growing approach to medical care that aims to use patient genetics to determine the likelihood of them getting certain diseases, while genetic testing can tell scientists that certain individuals may be at a higher risk of developing, say, breast cancer. Using race as a proxy for genetics can actually hinder the precision of medical approach. Despite diversity in the way humans look on the outside, race is a complex social construct, not biological reality. How people are categorized into different races changes through time and across cultures. There are no defined boundaries where one race ends and another begins. And genetic differences are often greater between numbers of the same racialized group than between members of different races. Does this mean there is no biological concept to race at all? Not necessarily. There are cases where patterns in genetic variation can be linked to people from different places. For example, the genetic blood disorder sickle cell anemia may develop in order to provide protection from the infectious disease malaria, which is commonly found in parts of the world where people are at high risk for malaria, like regions in sub-Saharan Africa. However, this does not mean that every black person is more likely to have sickle cell anemia, nor does it mean that only black people are likely to have it. Confusing race with ancestry from a specific region can lead to assumptions and oversimplifications that can get in the way of proper treatment. Former medical student Amita Kalichandran, an author of the Nautilus article, Is There Any Place for Race in Medicine? notes that in medical school, she was taught to make corrections for black patients. While studying in a teaching hospital, her attending physician asked her to recommend a prescription for a black patient. The medical team prescribed the patient a calcium channel blocker rather than a standard ACE or an ARB that non-black patients usually received. It was only later that Kali Chandran learned that this recommendation was based on studies of the responses of African Americans, but the patient she was asked to diagnose was an immigrant from West Africa at a Canadian hospital, which meant that the medical team prescribed medicine not based on the data from people of his particular genetic line or his lived experience, but on his skin color alone. Some of these corrections are now embedded in the code of electronic medical record algorithms, addressing a variety of conditions. Diagnoses determined by race alone can lead to worse outcomes for a patient. It is dangerous to assume that an individual has the same experience as a group of people. Causes of health complications are usually linked to inequity and other social factors, not race lines. Race-based differences are essential to acknowledge because simply deleting corrections from medical texts will not attain unbiased healthcare completely. Comprehensive data must be collected about patient social and economic exposures, shifting from race-based medicine to race-conscious medicine. Race and ethnicity should be considered as part of the decision-making process, but no medical decision should be purely race-based. Race and biology are linked in another, much more significant way. Although there's not a biological basis for race, there is substantial evidence that race can influence our biology. According to Professor Leith Mullings, race is not biological, but has biological consequences. Systemic racism creates barriers to accessing health care and healthy living conditions that can put people of color at greater risk of health problems 
like preterm birth, multi-generational trauma, and dangerously elevated levels of long-term stress. Emerging science in epigenetics suggests that these negative effects can even affect later generations of people by changing the ways that passed down DNA is expressed. This means that differing health outcomes for people in marginalized racial groups are most often not caused by genetic predispositions. They're caused by the effects of living in a society where racial hierarchies privilege some bodies while disadvantaging others. In the past, the effects of racism in medicine have been even more glaring. Take, for example, two notable cases of experimental medicine. In the infamous syphilis studies carried out between 1932 and 1972, scientists observed how syphilis, a treatable disease, affects the body when left untreated. The subjects of the study were Black men who were blatantly neglected in terms of medical treatment. They were left untreated and unaware of the true nature of the study as their symptoms progressed. In the early 1990s, members of the Havasupai American Indian tribe gave blood samples for research into the treatment of the diabetes that harmed many tribal members. In the 2000s, they were stunned when it came to light that their blood had since been used for many other types of research without their knowledge, and some blood samples were still being kept in a lab. Some of these research projects were seen as damaging to the tribe's reputation or in contradiction to their religious beliefs, and nothing beyond the diabetes research was consented to. To researchers, the blood samples represented raw data to be analyzed as much as possible, but to the Havasupai, they represented the remains of their loved ones. The tribe fought and won a seven-year legal battle to receive monetary compensation and have the remaining samples repatriated into their care. Between racial assumptions, genetic advancements, and unequal treatment, the relationship between race, biology, science, and medicine is fraught with ethical and methodological issues. What can be done about this? The journal Nature is updating their reporting checklist for authors, requesting authors who use race, ethnicity, or other socially constructed categories in their articles to do the following. Specify the categories used and explain why such classification is needed, Explain the methods used to categorize people in this way, whether that's participant self-reporting, social media, or data from a census or administrative records, and describe how they controlled for confounding variables such as socioeconomic status. Medical practitioners can search their practices to find places where corrections for race are taken for granted and revisit the research. Has the research included people of different racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds? Considering today's understanding of how race is used as a proxy for regional variations, does the research really support the benefits of differential race-based care? Medical providers and researchers should also learn about the ways that socioeconomic disadvantages and systemic racism can affect the health of their patients and research subjects. They should remain aware of the ways that science and medicine have historically disregarded and devalued people in black and brown bodies and work to build trust with their patients or research subjects by ensuring they're treating them with transparency and respect.